What's up YouTube, Eric Vasquez here from Teach Me To Design. In today's video, we're gonna be creating a custom coffee cup mock-up from scratch inside of Adobe Photoshop. And I'll be showing you how you can build this mock-up so that you have total control over the colors and the appearance of everything. And to do this, we'll be using our logo design that we came up with in our last video to create a branded presentation that looks even more professional, even more polished. So let's get into it. So in last week's video, I showed you how to use GPT-4 to come up with a uh, custom logo design for a coffee shop. And I walked you through my entire design process for developing a couple of different logos and some assets and everything like that. Um, but today I wanna take it one step further and we're going to go ahead and create a custom coffee cup mock-up that we can apply our logo to. So I'm over here in Photoshop and I've got these three different images open, um, just using a couple pictures of a coffee cup that I took uh, while I was at home and I just had the idea. So what we're gonna be doing today is cleaning up each of these three images and basically combining them into one sort of mock-up template uh, where you'll be able to change colors and apply any kind of logo you want. So I'm just gonna start off with this uh, first image here, which is, Pretty basic, uh, just kind of a slightly above view of this coffee cup. So the first thing I need to do is isolate the coffee cup. So I'm going to zoom way in here and I'm just going to begin tracing around it with my pen tool just so I can get a nice clean selection. Now there's a few ways you can do this and it's probably easier if, uh, if you're using a Wacom tablet for this, uh, but my Wacom tablet is not hooked up right now. So I'm just going to manually kind of trace around the shape here of the lid, go all the way around the coffee cup so they can get a nice clean selection. Okay, and then once you have closed your selection there, just go ahead and click on the layer mask to isolate that image. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing for our next one, which is a slightly different angle of the cup. I wanted to get you know, a few different angles here so that we can create a mock-up where it looks like the coffee cup is kind of falling. But for now, the first step is to just isolate each of the three cups. And of course, I'm going to clean it up so I can remove my hand uh, from the image too, because we definitely don't want that in there. All right, again, once you've gone all the way around, press Command, Control, and re hit Return on the keyboard to activate the selection, and then click the layer mask icon at the bottom of the layers palette. Now I'm just gonna go on to the third one here and do the same thing. All right, so we've now isolated all three of these coffee cups here and it's looking pretty good, but we just have to do a little bit of cleanup uh, on the second one here. I just wanna finish taking my thumb out of this, out of this picture. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and clone that out really quickly. Okay, so I'll make a copy of it here. Press S on the keyboard to get my stamp tool. And I'm gonna make that brush a little bit bigger. And what I can do is press R on the keyboard to rotate this, just rotate the canvas. Press S once again. And now if I sample this piece up here, and I'm just using a soft brush, which you can see up here, I've got a 50% opacity, 200 pixel soft brush, maybe even go a little bit bigger. I'm holding the Alt Option key to sample a clean part of the cup. And then just coming straight down, and getting rid of my big old thumb. All right, and if you wanna blend this a little bit, you can see how the shadows start to get a little bit darker. I'm just gonna lower the opacity as I scroll down here. All right, and that will kind of blend your shadows a little bit. All right, and that's all you have to do. But also, the other thing that we have to do here is clone out the logo. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that as well using the same process here. Again, this generally works better if you hold Alt Option to uh, to sample an area that's clean and then go down and click, right? So I'm sampling from above and then clicking below. If you sample from like left to right, it doesn't always look as clean because there's a lot more variation uh, in the shadows and tones and things like that. So again, if you wanna try to blend it, you just reduce the opacity of your stamp tool. And you can do that very quickly just using the number keys on the keyboard. So I'll go from you know 50% to 20% and so forth. All right, so now we've cleaned that image up 
and I'm gonna go on to the next image and do the same thing, just continuing to remove the logos and clean it up a bit so that we've got a nice clean cup to work with. And again, you can use R to rotate the image if it makes it easier for you uh, while you are sampling. Okay, and then just use R to bring it right, right side up and it'll kind of snap back into place here. All right, that's not looking too bad. Just gonna get rid of that highlight there on the side and see if I can blend these shadows a little bit more. All right, and we're on our last cup now, or our first cup, and I'm just gonna go ahead and try to clone this logo out again so that we've got all three of our cups nice and clean. And we've now cleaned up all three of our images. All right, so it doesn't take too long. You just have to you know, have a little bit of patience. Sometimes you have to go in there and touch things up a little bit as you go, um, but it works pretty well. It doesn't take too long. But now what we're going to do is create a new file. So let's go ahead and press Command N on the keyboard. And I'm gonna make this, uh, let's say about uh, 10 inches by 10 inches with a resolution of 300. RGB color mode and hit create. And we can always change the size later if we need to. But what I'm going to do now is apply a uh, apply each of these layer masks to the coffee cups, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and click apply. And I'll call this front, drag it into my file. Okay, go to the next image, apply the layer mask. And I will go ahead and call this one like bottom since it's slightly angled upwards so we're seeing the bottom and then I'll go ahead and call this one side apply the layer mask and drag it into our new document okay and now what I'm gonna do is convert each of these into a smart object so hold the control key and click on each of these layers and choose convert to smart object and do the same thing for all three all right, and this way we can play around with the size and positioning of these three cups inside of this file here. All right, so I'm just gonna scale these down a bit, play around with the size and positioning. Right, and I'm just kind of creating a, a simple composition here uh, using these cups. Okay, so we've now got all three of these in our document here. And let's go ahead and make sure that we save our file before we do anything else. Now, the next thing we wanna do here is isolate the lid and this sort of main body of the cup here, this sort of tan brownish orange color on each of the cups. Okay, so I'm gonna start on the first one and I'm just going to use my pen tool to create a selection here around the bottom of the lid, like so, all the way to the other side, and then just go ahead and close the shape like that. Press Command, Control, Return on the keyboard, and now what I'll do is come down here to the Adjustment Layer icon and choose Black and White. Now that's just gonna remove all of the color from the lid for the time being, okay? And this will be really helpful for us because it'll give us a lot more control over the color of the lids and the bodies of the cups. All right, so now what I can do is go ahead and select the front again, create another selection here. And this time it's going to be for the sleeve or the, uh, the main body color of the cup here. All right, so don't worry about going outside the lines. We're just going to uh, follow the the shape of this color here. Okay, click on that point holding Alt Option to zero it out. Now my next point, I'll have more control over the handles and the direction of those points. All right, and then I'm just gonna close that shape as well. Press Command, Control, Enter to uh, make the selection. And then let's go ahead and add another adjustment layer icon here. This time I will go ahead and click on the hue saturation 
and just to zero that out for now so that we can desaturate it. Okay, and then basically all we need to do now is hold the command key on the keyboard and the shift key and click on each of these layer mask thumbnails. So first the black and white adjustment layer thumbnail icon for the lid, then while still holding command control and shift, click on the one for the body. And now what we're going to do is press command shift I to invert the selection, come down to the adjustment layer icon once again and choose black and white. And now that's just going to basically save us the time of having to create another selection on the bottom uh, for the main cup itself, okay? And what's nice about this now is that once we remove the color, it's going to be a lot easier for us to add or change new colors on the coffee cup. So for example, we have the body isolated here, right? So I can hold the command key or control on a PC and click on the layer mask thumbnail, come down here to the adjustment layer icon, and now I'm going to choose hue saturation once again, check off the colorize box, and I can now control the saturation and the color of just this part of the cup, which is pretty nice, right? So I actually like the way the red was looking, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave that as red for now. And you can see that it gives us a lot of control here. So I'm gonna rename this from hue saturation two to main cup color. Okay, and then the rest of these here will be to sort of, uh, you know, name them however you wish. So I can call this uh, cup lid, cup bottom. And this can just be like main cup saturation. All right, and then what I'm going to do is select this front smart object layer, hold the shift key and select my top adjustment layer then press Command G to put these all into a group folder and call this folder front. And we're going to repeat that process for the side and the bottom. Now you notice when I turned on the side smart object here, it's already black and white, um, but that's just because I don't have clipping masks here. So what I'm gonna do is fix that right now by going into the front folder, selecting this cup bottom adjustment layer. And if I move my cursor between this adjustment layer and the front smart object while holding the Alt Option key, you can see it changes into this little square icon with an arrow pointing down. And so now if I click that, it's going to clip that adjustment layer so that it's confined to the shape of this smart object, right? So it's only contained in the coffee cup. And now if, if I wanna do that for the other three, I'll select the adjustment layer above, the main cup saturation layer, hold Shift and select the cup lid, and then simply press command control and the left bracket key, then command control and the right bracket key. And that's just going to place it inside and then reposition them. So they all now have clipping masks here. Okay, so now that I've done that, you'll see the original color of our side. All right, so I'm just gonna repeat that process here for the next mock-up, the side here, by isolating each of the three parts, right? We'll start with the lid, then the main cup, and then invert those selections to select the bottom of the cup, just like we did before. All right, so I'm now selecting both of those selections, inverting it, and then adding another black and white adjustment layer to make the bottom of the cup black and white. All right, and I'll rename these layers in a similar way. All right, so the top one is cup lid, then I can just copy this name, main cup saturation, cup bottom. All right, and then we need our main cup color. So what I'm gonna do is hold the Alt Option key and drag this layer between the cup lid and the main cup saturation, hold control and delete that layer mask, hold the command key and select the layer mask thumbnail of the main cup saturation here for the side. Let me collapse that so you can see what I mean. To activate the selection and then just apply a new layer mask. Okay, so you now have the same four adjustment layers here. Again, select the cup bottom adjustment layer, hold the Alt Option key, apply the clipping mask, select the other three layers, press Command Control and the left bracket, Command Control and the right bracket, and now you've got all four of these clipped to the side. All right, so let's throw those in a folder, call it side, and now we have our side and our front, okay? And now we just need to do the same thing on our third cup, and then we'll be in pretty good shape.
right now you'll notice as i'm doing this part i'm actually not selecting this little thin piece of the lip of the cup here um, and that's because of the angle that we're viewing the cup at right so i actually want that to be white so that it matches the bottom of the cup so i did the same thing over here there's a little sliver in there that i'm not selecting all right however i am going to select the rest of the main cup color here and we'll fix that other part in the next step all right so now i'll select the layer mask thumbnail of the hue saturation layer hold command control and shift and select the icon of the black and white adjustment layer invert it by pressing command control shift and i and then add your next black and white adjustment layer all right and that's now going to control the area in here as well you can see that little bit of a lip now when i turn that on and off that's matching the bottom of the cup which is exactly what we want okay so let's go ahead and rename these once again cup bottom copy and paste that I'm just copying and pasting the names of each of these. Okay. And then again, I want the color to match. So I'm going to select the last one that I created here for the side view, hold the alt option key, click and drag that adjustment layer down here into this group, placing it between the cup lid and the main cup saturation. Delete the layer mask, hold the command control key and click on the layer mask thumbnail for the main cup saturation, and then add a new layer mask. Okay. Great. And now we're going to do the same thing where we apply the clipping masks and put these three inside. Now we can put all of these into a new folder here and we'll call this bottom. All right, so we've got our three cups set up here and we're looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and just add a little bit of a background here. I'm going to add a new adjustment layer, solid color, and I'm just going to make it like a light kind of gray color or medium gray see how that looks and we can always change this later right that's the beauty of creating a mock-up template like this you can always come in here and change the main background color and we can just get rid of this black color here and then let's go ahead and create a new layer just above it press g on the keyboard to get your gradient tool and now make sure that you have a solid black foreground color selected and check off this reverse box now, what I like to do is sort of create a vignette so that the edges are a little bit shaded. Okay, but in order to do that, we need to kind of figure out where the center of our image is so that it's even. And what I like to do is I'll just fill this layer with a solid color, press Command T on the keyboard, then Command R to bring up my rulers. And I can just drag out these guides and snap a few of these to the middle and then delete that layer press command control and the semicolon key, and you'll now see where those guides are. And you can turn your guides on and off here just by pressing command control and the semicolon uh, to toggle that on and off. So now when I create a new layer, press G to get my gradient tool, I can click right from the center and drag out to any of the four corners, and that's gonna give me a nice even vignette. Okay, so now let's go ahead and throw a hue saturation adjustment layer on top of that. And if we check off this colorize box, we can now change the color of our background very easily. And that will also include the vignette. So let's see how that looks if we maybe change it to multiply just to make it a little bit darker. And then we can reduce the opacity a little bit, maybe to around 84, 85. All right, and for now I'll leave it set to black and white just by dragging that saturation slider over. And then I'll put these three layers on the bottom here into a new folder called background, turn off my guides, and we're looking pretty good so far. Okay, so the next thing that I would like to do is go ahead and create a new layer, and I'm just going to go ahead and fill it with black. All right, then I'll hold the control key, click on it, change it to a smart object, and I will just call this logo main, put it into a group folder, and call this update here. All right, so what I can do now is double click to go inside of this smart object, turn that layer off, go over to Adobe Illustrator, where I can pick up the logo that we created in last week's tutorial for Caffinity. And now I'll press Command-C to copy it, then Command-Control and the Tab key to come back to Photoshop, 
press Command V to paste it, and make sure that Smart Object is checked off here. And now I can just scale this up a little bit so that it fills this shape. All right, and I'll just go ahead and rename this Caffinity Logo. All right, and you'll notice that now when I save this file, I can pr press Command S to save it, then Command W to close this window, and our logo is now in here. So we're not really going to touch this smart object unless we want to update what appears in our mockup. Okay, so for now, I'm gonna turn that layer off and just go back to my black square. Okay, and you'll see again, when I close it now, that's what we have. So let's go back in here, turn that on again, save it. I just wanted to show you how this works so you get the idea. And now what we're going to do is make a copy of this logo main smart object. So press Command J or Control J on the PC, and that'll create a copy of it. And then I'm just going to turn off this update here folder. And what I can do is also add a color to it, just so we know that this is an important folder that we don't want to mess with. All right, and I'll turn off the visibility there. Now, what I can do with this copy is come into my first mockup here, into the front, and I'm going to click and drag this into the folder. And I want to go ahead and use the main selection for each of our smart, smart objects here uh, for the folders. So what I mean by that is grab the main smart object, hold the command control key and click on the thumbnail, and then click on the folder name where it says front and apply a layer mask to it. All right, so now we're only seeing the logo inside of that shape. And let's go ahead and do the same selection for the side and the bottom. So I'm just gonna go in here Select the thumbnail for the side, select the folder name, apply a layer mask, go into the bottom cup, click on the thumbnail, select the folder name, and apply a layer mask. All right, so we've now got all of our cups in here. We can now put these into a group folder, call them cups, get rid of the color, we don't need that for now. And we're just keeping everything very neat and organized, so it'll be really easy to work with. So now if I go back into my front folder, turn the logo on, I can scale it down so that it fits nicely on the cup here. But you'll notice it looks pretty flat, right? There's no real dimension, it's not really following the shape like we want it to. So what we need to do is play around with some of the transform tools so that it fits better. So to do that, I'm going to press Command T to bring up my transform box here, the bounding box rather, and then hold the control key and click. Okay, and what we're going to do first is change the perspective a little bit. So check on perspective. And if I grab the top right or the top left handle and drag outwards while holding the Alt Option and Shift keys, it's going to angle the logo so that it follows the cup a little bit better. And conversely, if we go to either of the bottom left or bottom right handles, hold the Alt Option and Shift keys and drag inwards, it's going to make that follow the same perspective of the cup. And I'm using the sides of the cup here as a rough guide, okay? So now press return to apply those changes. And we can scale this down a little bit more just so it fits nicely. All right, something like that. But we also need a little bit of a warp here, right? So let's go ahead and I'm gonna scale that back up just a little bit. Press Command T once again to get this bounding box. Hold the Control key. And this time we're going to choose warp. Okay, so now you'll see you have this sort of grid in here which will allow us to manipulate the curve of our logo. So I'm just gonna drag these handles down to kind of follow the shape of the top of the cup, All right, like so. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull these bottom ones down a little bit as well. All right, just so it kind of follows the same shape here. All right, and if you need to, you can kind of play around with these handles a little bit goes a long way. You don't want to distort it too much. You just want it to kind of follow and look natural. And what I'm going to do is click here in the center and maybe just pull this down a tiny bit as well. So there's a nice curve here, okay? And then go ahead and press return on the keyboard to apply the changes. And the last thing I want to do here on this uh, first kind of logo here is double click on the smart object layer. And I want to blend it a little bit with the texture of the cup. So if I select this blend if option down here, I can hold the alt option key and separate some of these sliders and just see what happens if I pull these apart a little bit. 
right? I'm just experimenting here to see if I can get some of the texture to show through without making the logo completely disappear. All right, I just want it to blend a little bit more naturally so that it's not so stark. All right, so you can see this bottom one works pretty well. If I just check the preview box, you can see it looks a little bit more natural, right? It's not totally black, but it's showing a little bit of the cup through it. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave that set to around 129 here and then go ahead and click OK. Cool, so we've placed our first logo here and let's go ahead and just call this uh, logo. Cool. All right, and then what I'm going to do is close this folder, go back to my update here folder and select the logo main file, create another copy of it, and now we're going to place this one in our second cup. So let's turn off the front one for a second so we can see what we're doing. And just call this logo. And now I'll open up the side and bring this in. So now that we have our next logo in here, I'm just going to scale it down, roughly place it where I want. Okay, and I'm gonna rotate it a bit as well. Okay, and then press return to apply those changes. And now I can press R on the keyboard just to straighten that out to make it a little bit easier for me. And if I press Command T once again, I can use the perspective just to play around with that a little bit so that it's not perfectly straight. Okay, then what I want to do is grab this handle on the side, hold the shift key and just squash it just a little bit, just, just making it a little bit more uh, thin here on the edge. And then I'll go ahead and also warp this a little bit. I think I have to apply that change first. So let's go ahead and press Command T, hold Control, then choose Warp. All right, and we can now kind of warp this a little bit. Just so we can get this to look like it's following the the contour of the cup a little bit better. Something like that. I don't want the F to be totally chopped off, but I kind of want it to follow the edge of the cup here. All right, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm looking at this second F here and just trying to align the edge with the edge of the cup. Something like that. I'll bring this handle down a little bit and then press return. Okay, now I can go ahead and straighten my canvas back out here using R on the keyboard and it'll kind of snap into place. And now let's just go ahead and move this up a little bit just so we can reposition it now that we're looking at it this way. Okay, and again, what I'm going to do is double click on this layer to open up my layer styles. And I'm just gonna hold the Alt Option key and separate this bottom slider here just like we did before until I can see some of that coffee cup texture. All right, so this time I'm setting this to around 160, 165, somewhere in that ballpark looks pretty good. All right, and I may have to warp this just a little bit more to get it to look natural. All right, something like that looks pretty good. And you'll notice there's a little bit of a highlight here on the edge of the cup. So what I'm gonna do is add a layer mask to this logo press B on the keyboard to get my brush tool, and then use a low opacity soft brush, maybe around 20% or so. And I'm just going to lightly erase a little bit of this here so that our highlight shows through. Okay, so I'm just gonna erase a little bit of the edge there. And what you can do is click on the top, hold the shift key, and then click on the other side. And it's gonna basically make a straight line for you. All right, just so that highlight shows on the edge of the logo, that just adds a little bit of realism there. And do the same thing on the bottom of the C over here. All right, and that's just gonna help it blend even better. All right, just a little subtle touch like that goes a long way. All right, we've now placed our second logo in here. So let's go ahead and go back into the front one for a second. I'm just going to adjust the blend here a little bit. Maybe bring it to around 130 or so, so it matches the other one. Or 124 looks pretty good. All right, and then we're gonna go back into the main update here folder, select our smart object, press Command J to copy it once again. And now we're going to place this on our bottom cup. All right, so you can turn off the others, make it easier for yourself. Go ahead and drag this one in. We'll call it logo. And I'm just gonna remove the color here 
from each of these. All right. And we're going to basically do the same kind of thing here, right? Where we're first scaling it down and then we're roughly placing it where we want on the cup just by rotating it first. All right, somewhere about there. And since we're looking at this one from the bottom slightly, if the cup is slightly tilted up, uh, we need to adjust the logo so that it matches the perspective of the cup. All right, so I'll press Command T on the keyboard and now I'll hold control, click on the menu here and choose perspective. And this time I'm going to grab the top left or the top right handles, hold the alt option and shift keys and drag inwards. All right, and then I'm gonna hold the same keys down, alt option and shift and drag outwards on the lower handles just to change the perspective a bit there. Okay, press enter or return on the keyboard to apply those changes. Rotate it a bit more. And now let's go ahead and play around with the warp, okay? So we want to actually drag this one up a little bit this time. And the easiest way to kind of do this is I'm looking at the lid as a guide, like the, the curve of the lid and the curve of the bottom of the cup here. So that I can just, you know, kind of follow that, use that as a guide. All right, and like I said, less is more. You don't have to go crazy here. And now I'm just going to reduce the size of this a little bit. Okay, and that looks pretty good. Let's double click the logo smart object to come into our layer styles, hold the alt option key and split this underlying layer, uh, this little tab here, so that we can get some of our cup to show through again, just like we did on the others before. All right, and each one's gonna probably have a slightly different setting. So just play around with it and try to get it to match the others as close as you can. And I'm gonna set this one to around 160 or so. Click okay. And now I'll do what we did on the last one on the side. I'm going to add a layer mask, use a soft black round brush at a low opacity, and I'm just going to click, hold shift, and then click on the bottom with a solid black color selected, of course, just to fade the edge a little bit and allow some more of that cup to show through. And I'll do the same thing on the opposite side here. Okay, so now when I turn on all of our cups, we've got our nice looking mock-up here. And what I want to do is maybe make that logo just a little bit darker still. It's still not quite, there we go, something like that. And I can take the bottom one and just move the logo down a little. But I don't want to move the mask with it, so I'm going to unlink the layer from the layer mask and just move the smart object layer down. Okay, and I'm going to warp it just a little bit more, I think. Somewhere around there looks pretty good. Okay. So now I'm just going to go ahead and, and tweak the positioning a little bit of each of these logos. Going to move it up a little bit higher on the first cup. And then the beauty of this is, let's go ahead and save this file. I can add some shadows here for each of these cups, which will be really nice. Um, and we can also change the color of the logo once and have it update in all three places. So before we do that, let me just go ahead and add some shadows to each of these cups to make it a little bit more realistic. So to do that, I'm going to use my ellipse tool over here in the toolbar, and I'm just gonna create a rough circle that kind of basically follows the shape of the bottom of the cup. Okay, and then I'm gonna make sure I have a solid black fill color selected and press Alt Option Delete on the keyboard and that's going to fill my shape with solid black. Now what I can do is hold the control key, change this to a smart object, go up to my filter menu and apply a blur, Gaussian blur. And you don't have to go crazy here. Let's maybe make it around 20. Let's see what that looks like. I don't need it to be so high because this one is gonna be sort of touching the ground. So you don't need quite as much blur here. All right, but we just want like a little bit of shadow here. So I'm gonna pull this down Just the touch and then maybe reduce the opacity right or you can just use a large soft brush at a low opacity and manually paint in a little bit of shadows to see what that looks like just to help ground this right and then i can apply a layer mask and kind of fade out a little bit here in the bottom to 
something like that. I don't even need that first shape that I created. I'm just going to manually brush that in. All right, and then I'll just call this front cup shadow. And then let's go ahead and do the same thing for the other one. So because the other cups are floating, the shadow is going to be a little bit different. But what I can do is create a selection of the cup by clicking on the layer thumbnail, creating a new layer and pressing Alt Option Delete to fill the layer with black. Hold the control key, convert it to a smart object, then press command T to do a free transform. Hold control and choose flip vertical. And now I'm going to move this down. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and apply a blur. All right, and this one can be a little bit higher, maybe around 28 or so because it's further away from the ground. Click OK, and then let's reduce the opacity quite a bit and now maybe transform it a little bit just so that it kind of matches up with the perspective here that we have in our first cup, right? So if we're saying that there's a ground here that our first cup is sitting on, we kind of want our shadow to look like it's, you know, in the same space, right? So we can do something like that, apply a layer mask to it, and then maybe just fade it out a little bit just so that it looks a little bit more natural like that. And this will be called side cup shadow. Okay, and we're going to do that same thing with the bottom cup. Okay, so I might actually move that one up a little bit more. Okay, make a selection, create a new layer, fill it with black, convert it to a smart object, press command T to do a free transform, flip it vertically, move it down, apply a blur, and you can use the same blur setting you used for the previous one, around 28, then click OK. And we're going to reduce the opacity here a bit to around 34 as well. Press Command T and we're going to hold the Shift key and just kind of squash it a bit like that. Okay. And then we can just kind of reposition it slightly just to see what looks the best. Apply a layer mask and kind of brush it out a little bit here. And then let's go ahead and call this one Bottom Cup Shadow. So now we've got all of our shadows. I'm going to put them into a group folder, call it Cup Shadows, and place them at the bottom here, outside of our uh, Cups folder. All right, so we'll have our Cups, we have our Cup Shadows, and now we can apply some uh, overall sort of color grading to this. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new adjustment layer at the top, apply a Levels adjustment layer, and I'm just going to drag this handle in to give it a little bit of contrast, just a little bit of extra pop there, if you will. All right, just to make it look a little bit more dramatic. All right, and now let's go ahead and click on the new layer icon while holding the Alt Option key. And I'm going to call this layer Noise. Check off the box that says Use Previous Layer to Create Clipping Mask. Change the color to gray and the mode to Linear Light. And then check off the box at the very bottom that says fill with linear light neutral color 50% gray and click OK. Now I'll convert that layer to a smart object. Go up to the filter menu and choose noise, add noise. Now for this I'm going to do uniform monochromatic noise. Change the amount a little bit less to around 25-26% and then reduce the opacity to around 20% and drag the fill down to somewhere about Let's see what looks good, maybe around 40%. So just a little bit of overall noise to help tie this together. And we actually don't need that clipping mask there. I'm going to unclip that. And I'm going to call this noise, put it in a folder of its own. Get rid of the highlight color there. And then let's add one more adjustment layer here for overall hue saturation. Okay, and we can just desaturate this just a touch and this is sort of like our master kind of saturation here. So now I can select both of these adjustment layers, put them into a group folder, and call this uh, CC for color correction. And now let's go ahead and tweak that logo, because this is really the best part about doing a mock-up like this. If I go into my Update Here folder, where we have our very first logo, double-click on it, I can now come in here and change some colors. So what I'm going to do is select the Caffeinity logo, hold the Alt Option key, click on the adjustment layer icon and choose solid color. Now I want to check off this box that says use previous layer to create clipping mask and then click OK. And now 
we can change the color to whatever we want. I'm going to maybe choose something kind of warm, right? Maybe try this pale yellow at first. And I only want this to be on the smiley face part of our logo. So what I'm going to do is select the layer mask that's attached to it. Press command control I to invert it. Press B to get my brush tool, then X so that my foreground color is white. Change the opacity of my brush to 100 by pressing zero on the keyboard. And then I'm just gonna make it small here and just paint in the area that I want to be yellow. All right, so we inverted the mask and we're just filling in this color here. Because I kind of want the smiley face to stand out. I want it to be obvious, okay? Now I can select the Caffinity logo, come back down to the adjustment layer icon and choose solid color. And this time I'm gonna choose maybe more of like a reddish brown color, something like that. Click OK. And for this, I want the color to only affect the tagline. So what I can do is select the layer mask, invert it, grab my rectangular marquee tool, drag a box only around the tagline, and then with a white foreground color selected, press Alt, Option, and Delete on the keyboard. And that's going to just color the tagline. Okay, so we can rename each of these tagline color, smiley face color, and then let's add one more color here. And I might change these. I want to look for maybe a, a nicer kind of color palette, but I'm just showing you how we can start to do this a little bit. So for now, I'm just going to make this like grayish blue. Maybe I'll change that from a yellow to a more of a orangey color. Orange and blue usually look good together. And then let's go ahead and leave the tagline as it is and just rename this one main logo color. And now if I press command S to save this and then command W to close this tab, it's going to update the color on all three cups. And the reason for that is because we made copies of our main logo here. So that's pretty cool. That's really the nice thing about a mock-up like this. And now if you want to, you come into each of these cups and you can control the main cup color. So let's go into each of these folders, select the main cup color by holding the command key on the keyboard. And I'm going to add a color to these. Let's make them yellow. All right, so that way you'll be easy to see the main cup color that you want here. And so if I move this around, I can change the color of that cup sleeve here. If I want to make it, you know, more of a gray, I can make it like a brownish orange color. Do something like that, right? You can change the color of these to whatever you want. So in order to finish this off, let's go ahead and just grab a few quick color palettes. And I'm gonna use a website that I like to use a lot for generating color palettes, and I'll show you what that is. All right, so I like to use Adobe Color a lot for this. And what's nice about it is you can just go to the Explore tab, and I can just type in Coffee Shop or any type of theme that you want, right? So if I type in Coffee Shop, you'll see it'll generate all of these different palettes for me along with images showing where the colors are pulled from. So what's really cool is I can kind of come in here and see what colors I like, right? So knowing our coffee shop is called Caffinity, maybe we want to try a few of these color palettes out. I'm kind of digging this one here. So if I hold command, click on that one, I can take a screenshot of these colors and it gives me the hex code for each one, right? So I'll grab that one. And then maybe let's try another one that's a little bit more muted, like this one here. Again, I'm gonna just take a screenshot of it. And let's just start with those two. Or what the heck, I'll grab a third one here. This one's kind of nice too. Okay, now let's jump back into Photoshop. So now that I've got these color palettes here, I can open them up and take a look at them to see how each of these will fit with our mock-up. All right, and what I'm going to do here first is change the background color. All right, so go into the background folder here and I can double click on this gray and maybe sample some colors here. Okay, and let's just turn off that hue saturation adjustment layer for a moment. So if my background here is this kind of brown color, I just need to click on the adjustment layer here and I can change the color to any of these that I like. All right, and this one's kind of nice, kind of like in this color, something in this family, right? It feels kind of warm, something kind of neutral like that so that our cups really pop out. All right, and now I can turn on the hue saturation for that if I want to 
play around with that a little bit more. You can increase the saturation there, decrease the saturation a touch. It just kind of gives you more control over the background color and the vignette. But for now, let's leave it off. All right, I'll grab my cup shadows, maybe change them to multiply. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is change my main logo color. So again, go into the main logo, double click to open it up, and I can now change each of these colors. And what's cool is if I just move this over to the side, reduce the size of my mock-up a little bit, I can kind of see the results here in real time. So I'm just rearranging some of these palettes for a second. Okay, so I can now see my color palettes, my logo, and I can start to change some of these colors. All right, so let's change the smiley face color. We'll change our tagline color. And we'll make the main logo color, maybe this reddish brown here, see how that looks. Or we can try this really red color up here. And then if I click Command S to save it, it's going to update the colors on the mock-up. Okay, but still I'll have to come in here and just change the color of each of these cups. So what I can do is use the hue saturation adjustment slider to move these around and get a color that I like. Or another way that I can do this is to use the same selection, click on the thumbnail icon, come down to the adjustment layer icon and add a solid color adjustment layer. And now I'll go ahead and sample one of these other colors, maybe this grayish blue. All right, and now I'm gonna turn off this main cup color one for a second and instead change the solid color adjustment layer to multiply. All right, and that's going to give us another way to change the color here. So I'm actually gonna do that instead of the hue saturation layer that we used before. Main cup color, change it to yellow. But we're using the same selection. So let me sample that color, copy the hex value, go into the side, make a selection here, add the solid color adjustment layer, paste the hex value, change it to multiply, call it main cup color, the highlight will now be yellow, and we can remove that hue saturation layer below. All right, and then one more time, same thing on the bottom, make a selection. We're just essentially replacing these hue saturation adjustment layers with solid color adjustment layers now. It's just gonna make it easier for you to change the color. There we go. Okay, so now that I see the way that these colors are looking, we obviously still need to do some work on our main logo here so that we get enough contrast. All right, so if I change all of these to that same color, you can see we've got a pretty nice looking uh, logo here. It's definitely popping, but we need a little bit more color in here. So let me just play around with some more of these colors and see what looks the best. All right, and I think, you know, a color palette like this is working pretty well. So I'm gonna go ahead and save my smart object for my main logo, close out, close these swatches here. And then make sure what you once again, make sure you save your mock-up. And now I can just come into the background color, play around with a little bit more in case I wanna change it up. All right, maybe add a little bit more yellow into it. just to see how everything's looking, right? But you can see it's very easy at this point to come in here to change any of these colors that I want and to keep it all looking pretty nice. And again, I also have my master kind of controls up here that can increase the saturation. So let's do that, let's bump that up a little bit. And I can also play around with the sort of overall contrast. So let's modify that a bit more. And again, just to show you how easy it is to modify this mock-up now, Let's go into our smart object and I'll pop over to Illustrator and just pick up this other logo that we were playing around with last week and I'm going to paste this one in instead. All right, smart object, paste. Let's scale it up a bit. Turn this one off and I'll just quickly add a, a couple of colors here. All right, just to 
show you guys how this looks. Maybe something like that. And then I'll make the other parts maybe white or a light yellow even. All right, and we'll do that for the, uh, the electrified bean at the top here. All right, and then press Command S to save it, Command W to close the tab. And you can see that it's just replacing the logo uh, just like we set it up before. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put our other logo back where we had it. Save this out. And there you go. So we've created a pretty cool looking mock-up here. And if you wanna do any finishing touches on this, like for example, I would come in here, maybe bring a little bit of this edge back in. Okay, just brushing a little bit of the logo back in here now that I see it in color. Okay, and I'm gonna tweak the positioning on this side one a little bit by unlinking the smart object from the mask. And I'm just going to maybe choose distort, drag that up a little bit. Right, just to tweak that a little bit more and don't forget to link those back up once you're done. All right, so now you've seen how to create a custom branded coffee cup mock-up from scratch in Adobe Photoshop. I've taken some of these images myself so that I could play around with the different perspectives and show how they work. But obviously you can turn on any of these if you just wanted the front cup. You could just turn these other ones off and just have one cup in here. You could have two cups or you could have all three. And the beauty of this, as I showed you, is it's super easy now to change the logo to anything you want and have it update on all three cups. So I've shown you the free way to do this as I walk you through my entire process, but if you don't have the time to do this yourself or if you do just want a quick sort of shortcut and you wanna get this mock-up, head on over to my Gumroad store and you can pick up this mock-up as a layered PSD file. In fact, it's the same PSD file that we're creating here today. So hopefully this has been helpful for you and provided you with some insights as to how you can get creative and make some of these mock-ups on your own. If you did enjoy this video, please go ahead and smash that like button. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so you never miss a video. Thank you all so much for watching. This is Eric Vasquez here for Teach Me to Design, and we'll see you next time.